and Strachan. Are there any declarations of interest? Uh, the minutes on pages 4 to 12. Can I take them as an accurate record? Yes. Are there any matters arising? Yeah. Councillor Carter. <coughs> Uh, minute 16, Customer Services Action Plan. And you may recall we had some uh, discussion about that last time. Uh, I note that um, on the entrance link, uh, item 2, consult with customers, uh, quarter 3, 16, 17. Um, we're about, what, 14 days away from then. Uh, I'm just wondering if you have an update as to how this is going to be implemented uh, and how the members of staff are going to do the consultation at no cost. <coughs> We're working on the local government association uh, and they're going to assist us uh, with the engagement, with the community engagement the groups. So we're we'll meeting with them who are actually on the phone room tomorrow and I expect them to be in the game next week. Would they clear the LJ off on the minute? Good, thank you. Uh, Councillor Carter. Yeah,
in is a local plan panel um, is going to meet soon, um, this sure. week, next Wednesday, um, <coughs> and we need to work through some of those issues. So while we're, you know, I, I would very much like to maintain that timetable, I can't right now guarantee that. Um, so um, the other thing that was referenced in the special council meeting was around um, uh, garden cities and um, the, the intention was to submit um, an expression of interest, nothing stronger than that, um, about uh, a garden extension, particularly from my perspective, principally around Kilston um, Park and, and development in, in Harlow. But clearly, um, that might have referenced, um, or early drafts of it did reference, all possible development in and around Harlow. And so officers are currently working through um, drafting amendments to that to um, Basically, not to make any illusions as to the development of the south and south and west. Um, now, there is some urgency on that, but it does need to be put on Monday. Um, I have seen an early draft of that. Um, there are still some drafting changes that would be required to meet the clearly expressed view of council. Um, but what I can say at this point is I will uh, absolutely assure everyone present. I am mindful that the council has expressed a clear view, um, and that will be reflected in anything I do or don't sign on behalf of the council. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just uh, a couple of administrative points. 
there appears to be no implications in this report. Uh, at least in previous year, uh, pre previous months, uh, there has been sort of some comment or another on page 30. Um, <coughs> just wonder if it's all been forgotten or uh, tied back. Um, but if I could go on to page 40, um, which is the service-based analysis, um, there's. Uh, <coughs> uh, what, I, what, I, what I would call a, a difference between words and figures. Uh, the text suggests serious current and imminent pressures um, on the, the housing funding. Um, but the variants on page 39 are described as minor service variations of, 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 of a saving of £19,000. So, uh, so, there appears to be a, a, a sort of mismatch between the comments and the, and the actual figures. Um, unless, it, unless it refers uh, or alludes to uh, Captain Amber's earlier comments about the uh, switch from the, uh, or transfer from the HRA to, uh, to the general fund, whether that's all creating pressures. Um, I don't know. Keir Harlow's performance. 
Is this in any way related to your decision not to continue with the Kia Harlow contract and to pursue elsewhere? Or is this a matter of Harlow Council taking its eye off the ball now that it's deciding to move elsewhere? Ball now that it's well, well, clearly, the fact that there are a large number of KPIs related to Kia Harlow, both in handling maintenance and environment maintenance, and of which only three, um, as you have highlighted, um, have had a different performance. Clearly, there will be a significant focus on ensuring that these, um, these are just a bit and, and don't reoccur. But it's not a general commentary on either um, the oversight of the council or the, the general performance of Kia Harlow.
Moving on to paragraph 11 on page 73. Uh, second sentence. As a result, the council now holds investments in certificates of deposit, uh, the CCLA, uh, money market fund, and fixed program investments of the Treasury DMO. Could you just refer me to where council approved the use of CCLA uh, and CDs? And whereabouts in Annex E there are the limits on investments um, for those particular products? Um, yeah, I can. Um, the decision to diversify into those specific investment uh, vehicles was actually taken as part of the 15-16 um, annual Treasury Management Strategy, and I can provide details of the relevant sections in that report for Councillor Carter, if he requires them. Chair, it would really help if opposition members, if they had detailed questions of this nature, if they talk to me or they talk to Simon, then clearly we'd actually clear these up and not waste the time of this meeting. <coughs> Through you, Mr Chair, I have given notice of these questions. These are, uh, these are no surprise to the officers. Okay. Should talk to the officers? Any further questions? Uh, <coughs> yes, Chair. Paragraph 36 on a similar vein. Um, <coughs> refers to considering utilising bonds during 1617. So again, where is the approval? Where are the parameters, limits, and and vendor assessments for bonds as would appears in NXT for all the other lenders. I could just refer to the, the paragraph again, please. Paragraph 30, 36 on page 82. I did email this yesterday. Can you help me? Um, reference the previous response really um, it was uh, an option for us to use during 2015-16 which we did include as part of the Treasury strategy at that time and uh, therefore um, that has been through council approval. Thank you. Uh, I do recall um, a session where Arlington briefed on diversification and balancing uh, this which I believe Councillor Carter was present at. But with respect there is no reference in NXD to the criteria or uh, lending units. We're, we're taking away to a little bit. And <coughs> sorry, uh, finally on Annex A on page 85, the incremental impact of capital investment decisions. This is an indicator of affordability that shows the impact of capital investment decisions on council tax and the housing rate levels. The incremental impact is the difference between the total revenue budget requirement of the current approved capital programme and the revenue budget requirement arising from the capital programme proposed. <coughs> when uh, uh, Mr. Freeman has a moment, perhaps you could uh, uh, clarify that one for me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just, just in response to Councillor Carter, um, I acknowledge receipt of the questions that were raised uh, yesterday, and um, I was anticipating a full list of uh, responses to be sent this evening, but they will be back with you in the morning. Bobby, thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Comments? Really to join with uh, Council Adam, it's not often I agree with him, but um, I think you make a point every time we get a decent Treasury Management uh, report in front of us to commend our officers, and I wholeheartedly support him in that commendation, uh, both when we were in power and when you've been in power, our, our um, financial officers have dealt very well with the monies of the councils, and um, that recognition deserves to be put on, on record from both sides of the channel. Right, then our uh, contributions. Um, the um, well, to note um, recommendations on page 71. Um, is there anything? 
now to item 14, um, the debt rights office, page 94 to uh, 96. Chair, the, uh, before I move this, I should yes, no explain no. that the remedies are coming into the system. Um, a, there's got no figures attached to it, but the amount written off in the recommended A should be £184,102 and six pence, Chair, um, as set out in table one of the report. And the amount to be written off from recommendation B is incorrect and should be £42,048.93 uh, uh, pence. But on the basis of those recommendations, Chair, I would actually uh, move um, this item. Yeah, I will second them. And the, the full figures are in table to one and the correct figures are in table to one and two in, in appendix one of this report. Are there any questions or comments, Councillor Carter? Hey, Chair. I, I have to uh, express my astonishment that the, uh, uh, you, know, you can't even actually get the recommendation right. Uh, you know, the, the, these reports have been out for, for a week. Um, and I assume other people read them as well and may as well pick this up. Um, but, uh, yeah. <coughs> yes, so as you know, they are, as they were published a, a week ago, um, and they have been corrected in this meeting. Um, and as I pointed out, the correct data is in table one and two. Um, so you make some different comments about um, um, typo. You can correct it anyway. It's not, not very good. It's too much. Same with the I noticed there aren't any um, uh, figures for uh, working off of uh, ten pets, former ten pets. I'm aware that the uh, limits for write off um, have been reviewed at the, uh, some time ago. Um, but it's therefore impossible for uh, the, the cabinet or anybody else to be aware of what's actually being written off. Um, and I'm wondering, perhaps not now, uh, if it's possible to know how much has been written off. Uh, this year for both current and former tenant debts. Uh, just, you know, just for openness and transparency that uh, these things are, 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 are actually happening and how much that actually cost us. So, so um, these, these white offs do come to cabinet? Um, it depends, it depends on the amounts, Chair, which the officers have shot, yeah. but from time to time it will actually be published, but it's not published in this particular report. They will only be reported to Cabinet where uh, it reaches the, the level where Cabinet approval is required, but normally with, uh, uh, with uh, tenant uh, debts and formal debts, it, it doesn't reach the threshold to actually come here, which is why we don't see them. Um, so the, the right of limits were revised, were revised uh, some time ago, uh, and perhaps it might be helpful in future reports, uh, just as we used to put the share allocations of the council tax premiums that are being written up in this place. Uh, yeah, yeah, just, just as, a, as a reminder for members as to why these things don't come up. But I mean, I, I'm presuming there are guidelines or formulae uh, for deciding write-offs, you know, particularly former tenant debts. So, for example, was that the 31st of March 16, there was 1.8 million pound of former tenant debt in the accounts against a provision of 2.8 million. Uh, you know, why is it necessary to carry, carry so much former tenant debt forward? Uh, you know, why I'm asking, you know, obviously not now, but uh, perhaps for, for a future meeting, where we can see you know, what the guidelines are, why we are keeping so much uh, former tenant debt. You know, if we've lost touch with these people, you know, you know, we've got no hold over them, you know, we can't take them to court or anything. Um, <coughs> you know, why do we have to keep, uh, keep, 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 keep it in our books? If, if they do come back to us, the account can be restored and the, the debt can be recreated. But you know, we've, we've got a huge chunk, a chunk of debt and a huge chunk of provision, 2.8 million. I mean, okay, uh, there are current tenant debts as well, but I, I suspect they are the write-offs are considerably smaller than they are for former tenant debts. Uh, again, I think we need you know, the, 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 the sort of tenants and the, and the, and the rent payers need to, need to have sort of some transparency and what the council is actually doing and how well it's managing its funds. So is that a question? Well, <coughs> what is the speech? I'm, I, I, I'm asking for more transparency over uh, how write-offs work. You know, what is, you know, what are the procedures? Uh, you know, I'm, sure, I'm 
sure that there must be procedures, guidelines as to how long you leave a debt and, uh, and so on. You know, why is the figure so big? And, and also, why is the revision so big? 2.8 million for former debtors and 1.8 million for money. I will, I will ensure you get a point to the, the regulations of uh, you know, the procedures for, for debt write off.
convening at the <laughs> Board of the uh, 2016 item 17 on pages 105 to 129. Yes, I have great pleasure in all this. I would just like to say that, um, I would just like to say that uh, you see the important feature of this is to update policy from 2008. Uh, it hasn't been changed in any significant degree, but it still is a process by which we try to ensure that emergency uh, access or access in emergency situations to emergency services is as clear as possible and there's no confusion about where they should go. Secondly, it helps with postal um, services so there's no confusion about delivery of uh, postal. And also there's a, there's a minor involvement in ensuring that names themselves aren't uh, too controversial. Uh, I could give you some really controversial ones that have popped up in the past, but um, we generally find our way. We generally find our way to an acceptable solution with the developers. Uh, it also obviously updates the fees that are chargeable to developers and the procedure that developers need to follow, and also members of the public if they wish to change their um, name and number of their property. Thank you. Johnson. Only about 30 questions to the book. Only no, no. <laughs> in, all, in all seriousness, I, ha I have one. I welcome the report. Um, and it, uh, the portfolio holds right. Um, the Civic Society, whenever I, I get copies of minutes from them, and I'm sure the, the leader is the same, they've always talked about the fact that when this building was built, Clement Attlee Square was lost. Uh, and have been seeking for a number of years a reinstatement of a road within Harlow. And I just wonder if um, um, now we've got a new policy, maybe the Cabinet might want to look at the. Uh, the, the civic society's requests. Sorry, uh, we've, we've actually had a discussion with the uh, civic society because there is a particular problem about the ownership of the land out there. And in fact, we were looking at an alternative, which was actually down at Market Square. Uh, we have put that to them, and we are waiting uh, for a response. But I have to say, we did put that to them about two months ago. But that's the civic society. It takes time. There are no further questions on that. I mean, that's no. quite good. Also, as far as being a bit of a political variety, it's quite a power that was a serious underlying point yeah. to, to it. Um, so, uh, the recommendation on page 105 um, that we adopt the um, excuse me, policy. Right, so um, the next two items, items uh, 18. Change from when they were 
we are considering the impact of those changes, but I will give a more full response in a written um, answer to come to the party outside of the meeting. Thank you very much. Turning to page 53, we're talking about uncertainties. Um, the change to the regulations on the uh, impact of the use of depreciation and funding of reinvestment in that. Sorry. <coughs> Uh, page 53 about uncertainties. Um, the question is whether the change to the regulation of any impact on the use of depreciation or funding of reinvestment re in housing stock. You may need to write to me about that one as well. Page 61, uh, transfers to from the earmarked reserves. Um, there's one called the Housing Benefits Subsidy Reserve of £536,000. Uh, this risk is a possible adverse variation to receipt of subsidies. So, how big a risk is that in monetary or proportional terms? You know, what the, the variation might be? Uh, and what is the biggest negative variance we have suffered and why? Uh, and what is the highest balance to be held for practical and accounting purposes? You may need to write me on that one as well. I will, provide, I will provide a written response um, just to sort of point out that the housing benefit subsidy is a significant cost uh, to the council um, and um, the runs into seven millions of pounds. So although the reserve uh, currently looks um, significant, um, it is held against uh, major transactions which we undertake each year. But I will provide a full response. Thank you. Um, also on that page, there's a reference to something called the HRA OJU contract 2015 for which there is no uh, explanation on the following very helpful two pages. That's another £403,000. I think that, from memory, and again I'll check this and provide it in a full response, uh, that relates to the um, procurement process that the Council is currently uh, going through um, with its reprovision of the existing Kia joint venture contract. But there is one for the general fund. There are uh, money set aside um, from the general fund, and there is a proportional split between general fund and HRA. Good note, Mr. It has been included actually in a previous report in terms of the funding streams that are going to help establish the company that was agreed with Cabinet last September. So there have been no movements to that type of fund in the actual period of the <coughs> report. Yeah, money, money has been allocated against the um, earmark sum that was provided for both the general fund and the HRA, but I will include that in the response to the council for us. Moving on to page 80. Um, uh, the table uh, on uh, investments available for sale of financial assets. Uh, 1.890 million, representing a 5% loss on the £2 million investment, uh, which doesn't seem to quite accord with our strategy of seeking the highest rate of return consistent with the proper level of security and liquidity. Um, I'm just wondering. Uh, is this such a good investment? Uh, why we decided to go that the route? Um, and the, where the confidence comes in the narrative underneath the change of valuation that didn't. Uh, you know, uh, sorry, on the top of page 81, the value of units has and is expected to increase. And we're wondering what the cause of that was. Yeah, um, again, I can provide more detail, but essentially um, the investment um, is, is deemed to be, um, as reported, um, it's not a short-term investment, but a medium to long-term investment. Uh, there are certain up upfront costs of the investment taking place, which are offset against the capital sum that the council has invested. Um, so long-term growth uh, will be expected in the fund, but we also see a dividend back from the rental incomes from the property fund. So there are two sources there of gain for the council. One is the dividends from the um, occupancy and the rental income from the property fund that it achieves through its leases to tenants. 
and also through the long-term capital gain that we'll um, achieve through the units we hold in the fund. Thank you. And finally, top of page 93, operating activities. Uh, <coughs> funny, you, you were talking about dividends uh, to, to now. Dividends received in 15-16 was £86,000 compared with £1.6 million the year before. Sounds like we made some bad investments. I think um, in the ACTO reports that have been presented to Cabinet, um, the windfall sums that have been received from Kia have been detailed and were deemed to be one-off uh, through renegotiation of contractual arrangements. Uh, the long-term ongoing uh, level of expected return is at the lower level as, um, as reported in previous years. <coughs> Sorry, in, 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 in the public meeting, <coughs> you were saying that last year the council received a dividend from, from Kia Harlow of £1.6 million, which is about 10% of the annual service charge. Yeah, that's correct. We did. Closure 
presents information as specified in paragraph 3 of part 1 of Schedule 12A of the Local Act 1972, if and so long as all such as the case in public interest, in maintaining such an outweigh public interest in disclosing information. So I would like to ask the um, public to express the information.